right, let's start her up. James, what do you want to say about a disclaimer for this uh, book let's and just conversation? Say adults. Let's just say adults only. Adults only, graphic, NC-17. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like even adults only, but there still should be a little, uh, a little more warning to, you know, like very graphic, a very yeah. graphic, grim, and and it's it's one of the things I really liked or appreciated was like it wasn't like they were trying to pile it in every panel, just make it as gross as possible, but in doing so, when it does hit with the moments, it. It's much more, there's much more impact to it. Oh, the impact is definitely there. Every once in a while, you'll have to you know. Oh, start of the music, it's super loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very loud. <laughs> Sex and violence and bad language and all at once. All at once, all NC-17. It's, it's grim. Mm -hmm. Hi, and welcome to Seattle's number one comic book podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to the first issue of your next favorite comic. comic. I'm Larry. I'm James. And James and I are tonight, episode 118, are going to be talking about Crossed. Now, uh, Crossed is a... Crossed my heart, hope to die. Oh my goodness, this is a a very adult comic. It is um, graphic in nature. It's a um, not for everyone. In honor of Halloween, maybe. Yes, we're continuing a, a, a four a four issue uh, a stretch of horror books. We've done uh, Buffy mm. the Vampire Slayer. We did uh, before that. I forget. We did. Uh, oh, uh, Taint, Taint the, the Meat. Meat. It's the humanity. And we did. What well, did we did Tale of Sand? I guess that's not really. No, um, but we but that but that wasn't in October. So oh. now we are definitely into October, heading towards Halloween, heading towards the scariest time of the year, and this episode we <laughs> this episode and James' birthday, and this episode we are going to probably talk about the scariest book that we've ever done on the show. I would, in my opinion, I I would say so, and definitely the most graphic. So yeah, I'd say the most graphic. I don't know about scariest because I think scary isn't necessarily related to graphicness. Well, when we get into this, I think this is It's scary. correlated, it's, but not causated. Okay. I would agree with... Well, I want to I want to agree. I, I don't want to agree with that just yet because yeah. I think this is the scariest book we've read. <laughs> uh, but before we get right. into that, uh, some quick... You got a recent and decent for us? A quick, recent, and decent. What do you got? I'm gonna let the music fade. Oh my god, there's so much music going Larry, on. I can't wait. Alright. So this one is called Border Town. I'm pretty sure the music's gonna fade eventually. Border <laughs> Town. This is written by Eric M. Escuvel with art by Raymond Villa Lobos. It's published by Vertigo and it is a story of a small town called Hell's Gate uh, in uh, Arizona, and it's all in modern times with scary monsters that sneak through the fabric of uh, uh, the boom tube or whatever, uh, different dimensions, and take on our scariest... um, our scariest uh, uh, thoughts and, uh, you know... Uh, oh, but... so it's like Dementors combined with Pleasantville, or it's like the Purple Rose of Cairo mixed with yeah, it's, demons. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So these Chubacabras are... They're Chubacabras. Mm-hmm. They come through, and um, it's kind of like a, 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 like the Scarecrow the scarecrow in, in the Batman movies. Your scariest... Uh, uh, thoughts turn into reality when you see these monsters. So, and uh, is it pretty creepy looking monsters? Oh, they're great looking monsters because they're fully dressed in that form. So now put this in the t- content in the context of uh, immigrants. Uh, they're going to have these scary monsters 
in ice uniforms. Oh, okay. So, and then in the suburban uh, world, these are hooded uh, youth, you know, wearing scary hoods, you know, like a uh, like mm-hmm. a like a hoodie. Yeah, yeah, and, and you don't know what's you, you. They're walking away, and you don't know what's behind them, and then it pops out. Is there like jump jump scares? There are uh, uh, jump scares. There are near misses. And this is just beautiful art. I'm not really getting to the, 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 like the, 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 the real story here is we're all scared of something and, uh, the media and our politics are, um, feeding that scare. And somebody has put this into, um, monster form. And we have mm. these monsters that are coming at us. We don't understand them. And these monsters, once they jump back into their into their dimensions, their portal, mm-hmm. they're just dopey little fun little creatures. Oh, in their context, they're hardly anything. That's yes. cool. It's called uh, Border Town, and I'm loving it. First issue came out last week. Um, Vertigo, check it out. Um, I hope that was a good enough review. <laughs> Sweet. Well, should we dive into Cross? We, did you cross that off to the list? <laughs> I do not know if I want to talk about this book yet or not. It's it. I, w- I was I was reluctant to uh, pick this for the show, honestly. Uh, okay, fair um, enough. James, do you want to do the setup? Yeah. So this is like a post-apocalyptic type world. Um, you there's a lot of things that are unspoken at first and kind of laying hooks for. What kind of post-apocalyptic, you know, is it a zombie type thing? How did it happen? Was it a nuclear holocaust? Was there some kind of virus that spread? But we know that there's human survivors and it's hard to find food and that there's these human type bad guys who are about as bad as you can be. Um, And we cut to that really quick. So, like, one of my favorite things to pay attention to in a first issue is how quickly the type of comic it is is established like how quickly you see blood how quickly you see sex how quickly you see the level of fantasy or the level of sci-fi or swearing Um, and we get that on the second page but then it cools off so they just give you a flash of the terror of the outside world and then you're back into your cave of not really knowing what's going on for a good probably 10 pages. Right. Do you want, do we want to dive into that terror real fast cuz Yeah, so I don't know if they look like they look like uh kind of pretty muscly humans with like scraggly clothes and they all have like knives and forks and they're like dragging a naked woman by her hair and one of them has like a gas tank and one of them's naked and one of them's You know, there, it's, you know, there's a skeleton hanging from a pole, you know, or like skeletons hanging like from crosses type. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is horrific. And the, and it's, it's very, it's, it's not realistic looking, but it's, uh, what level would you like, what level of detail would you call this art? It's pretty detailed. It's, like, it's, I think the it's, tatters of their clothes are like very finely detailed. Yeah, the detailing is really the uh, the details there for sure. Um, and um, but it's not it's not the most realistic or the most detailed stuff we've seen. But it's definitely more on that side than it's not cartoonish. Not cartoonish, and it's just scary. I mean, like the, it, the buildings cult- are all blown out. Um, there's birds in the air waiting for scraps. Um, Blackbirds. And and the terror, this poor woman. You can't even, it's just uh-huh. like, it's scary. These these people. And it's, there's colors, but they're all like grayed or dampened or, you know, it's like a, a brownish green or like, there's not, there's no bright brightness to it. Yeah, it's, everything's muted. But um, it's not. It's not heavy in shadows at all. Yeah. And we, everybody. Which I think is important because so many of these types of like horror or 
dark thriller type things. They do a lot of heavy shadowing, which I think in some cases is a good move. But I thought this was kind of cool because they're not hiding anything in the shadows. They're right out in the open. Yeah. And they all, all of the characters, all of the cross characters, and it's called cross because once you've been affected with this pandemic, whatever it is, whatever the thing is, you get a strong rash that goes across your face in an, in an X type like across your nose and then across yeah. your cheeks. It's a heavy rash and all of these and, characters. And I couldn't tell if it was like what causes it, if it's like an initiation thing or cause like this, the girl uh, who's being dragged naked, she doesn't have it. She's, so it's like, Oh, are they going to give it to her? You know, what, what is the way that these bad guys, bec- good guys become bad guys? Oh yeah. I guess that's not, uh, that's not uh, addressed in this first issue. Yeah. Um, but which is a great that's a I mean that's an important hook that it could be rushed out of the first issue. You know, it could lay lay some groundwork, but I'd much rather drag out some of these bigger bigger things if you can. Like that's what I thought the the made Walking Dead so great was how well it was paced. They didn't give you too much. They they hooked you in. Yeah. So they they have definitely hooked us in with this first uh full page spread of this inter- terrible thing and then like James said it's back to hiding in the shadows for the surviving humans mm-hmm. and they have a uh, there's a, a band of humans and this is exactly what would happen I think in a, an apocalyptic setting like oh we're all we're the survivors and we're going to stay surviving we got our guns our little bit of food there's always a a, a uh, a, a different assortment of people. There's a bunch of different characters. Here we have a mom with a kid on her back, and our main character. We find our out main that, character is kind of a writer type guy. Yeah, he's he's, um, he's keeping well, a or, journal. Uh, yeah. Um. So we get his narration in boxes next to uh, some of the dialogue. Um. But he's. He's solo, and we find out why later in the comic. But uh, I thought this was kind of an interesting thing, is you get to see how much the band knows about the badness that's going on. They have this discussion where one guy is convinced that Salt will kill the bad guys. Well, right? it won't let them kill you. But going back to our earlier conversation about... uh scare mm-hmm. this comic scared the bejesus out of me and it's done completely in the writing now like the mm. imagery is something else we will definitely get into that but this writing this one writer is putting down um uh like all of the facts and figures of how they're staying alive and and this is more. This is scarier. There's a than... lot of detail in the in the writing. Like this is pr- it's pretty uh, word heavy, oh. without invading the the images too much. It's just pretty. The text boxes will have seven lines on them. Yeah, and but but like this 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 uh this story that this guy paints about how we ended up here, what we're doing, and. There's always one guy who does this sort of thing and 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 his thoughts and 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 feelings about this really bring it home to me. That's what makes it so scary mm. to me. Yeah, it, it's very it, it tries to paint a realistic story. Like this could happen or what you, it, it puts you in his shoes. Definitely. Yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 put you in his shoes and they're having this Silly conversation about, it's not silly, this guy, this one guy is convinced that he's seen it, he's, he's convinced himself that salt is going to be the way, uh, to, you know, splash that some, we can, oh, sorry. Yeah, splash some salt on these guys and they won't attack us. It's the salt. Yeah, that they can even turn, turn the tides and instead of running away, they can start attacking back. And so he carries a big bag, like a 10-pound bag of salt with him, mm-hmm. ready for this and, fight. And I like one of the things that one of the people... 